here. So do you ever wonder why a motorcycle gets written off so easily? Well, let me tell you. It's not what you think it is. When you're, uh, you've had a bike crash and all of a sudden the insurance company says it's a, it's a write-off. Now, I'm going to talk just sport bikes because that's what we're essentially talking about most of the time anyways. Now with sport bikes, you've got thousands of little parts. And all these little parts, they, they can cost 10 bucks, 5 bucks, 50 bucks, 500 bucks. And, you know, if your motorcycle's worth, say, $10,000, and I've actually seen this where uh, Baron von Grimble actually did it. He had a, a BMW uh, sport bike. Uh, that was a, was an insurance write-off, and essentially it was a write-off because they had these the bodywork was wrecked in a, in a few parts, and the, the cost for the parts and the labor is what literally wrote the, wrote the bike off. And what he did was he got the parts and uh, you know he didn't pay full retail prices for them because he got he got discounts and deals and. A lot of the parts he uh, installed himself, saving the labor. Now, in some cases, like for example, let's say you, you crash and you, you you cracked your frame or dented your frame, but let's say the rest of the bike's actually in good shape. Well, the amount of labor it takes to take all the parts out of your old bike and put them in the new bike, you know, unless the bike is ex stupidly expensive going to end up being a write-off simply because the, the bike shops are going to charge I'm going to say somewhere between 60 to 100 bucks an hour sort of depends on your market and where, where you where you live to take all those parts and make certain they're in good, sh good shape and put them back on the, the new frame and you know unfortunately that's the sad reality of it now, in some areas, you might have the option to buy your bike back from the insurance company and, uh, you know, repair it yourself. But there's also issues you have with the uh, whatever uh, state, province, city, country, whatever you live in. You may not be able to put a, a wrecked bike back on the road. You know, it's sort of, it, everyone's a little different, so I'm not going to go into detail on that. And a lot of times you have a problem getting insurance, you know, bringing a, uh, a previously wrecked bike on the road. But it's amazing, like I, uh, my first motorcycle I owned, which is a R750 Interceptor back in 83, I dropped it, putting it in the, in the garage. And it literally just fell over. And I replaced the clutch cover because it had a big uh, pedal line, minor, like a hairline crack in it, right where a bolt was. And it was just weeping oil. And it cost, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say around $100. Back in 1983, for this clutch cover. It was a big piece of aluminum. And uh, it was gonna cost almost $200 to have the dealer replace it, like replace it and install it. And for me, it cost me uh, an oil change, a gasket, and the part. And, you know, a couple hours of my time. So you can sort of see how it can get stupid expensive fast on, uh, on a, a seriously crashed motorcycle. And that's a bike that hasn't necessarily had a lot of serious damage, just a lot of little damage. You know, if you take a look at your motorcycle, like your, your street bike, it's like you have these fairings and you have inner fairings and you have ducts and you have the screws, the bolts and the brackets. And, you know, insurance companies, they generally don't want to pay for a repair. They just want to do a replace because for them it's cheaper because if the part costs $25, You know, 
it's going to cost, say, 30 minutes of labor to install it versus, versus uh, you know, say, repairing it where you put, you know, an hour and a half of labor into it, you're now losing money. So that's why a lot of times the insurance companies, you know, they do repair, uh, re replace over repair. And it's the same thing with the bodywork. The, the modern motorcycles, they have really, really, really nice paint jobs on them. And unlike, uh, you know, cars where there's tons of places to paint them, there's not a lot of places to paint motorcycles. So painting a bike has always been just a non-starter from, from the very beginning and you end up, uh, you know, just buying a replacement tank, you know, for a, you know, a, a scratch tank. Or you buy a, uh, you know, side panels or whatever. And it was really, really bad in the bikes in the, uh, in the 80s because they had a lot of lead in their, in their paint, which, you know, brings up vibrant colors, plus they have pearl and stuff like that. And they would have cost a fortune to paint. And in some cases, they couldn't be painted because in North America, you couldn't use those paints. The sort of see just, you know, just out of curious, some curiosity sometimes, just go online and there's a place like Partzilla and whatnot, and just go look at some of the parts of your bike and see what they they list for. And you can quickly see how you know your motorcycle can be you know written off by just something simple as dropping it in a parking lot at five kilometers an hour. So anyways, hope you found that interesting. Uh, Desktop.